What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, there's a lot of reports out right now, a lot of different uh, trade um, possible acquisitions and all these things out there, all these reports and all these sites are throwing out different things. Trade and trades in the off season is definitely crazy. Uh, NBA trades are crazy at this point in time of the, um, of the off season. And right now, of course, you know, the one that's being talked about the most right now, or one of the most, I would say, is the Kevin Durant situation. Now, the perfect, the so-called perfect trade between the Clippers and the Nets for Kevin Durant obviously um <clears throat> the reports obviously speak on you know Kevin Durant being traded for Paul George and a couple of future picks for the Clippers and as of right now you know per report from Woj you know the Nets want more back you know want more in return for a Kevin Durant than like a Paul George or somebody like that so and maybe a couple of picks and even what the Lakers are offering, you know, the Nets want more back in return. And, you know, I'm going to say this, you know, as far as the Clippers sake, um, the Clippers sake only, um, because I think the Lakers thing, I don't know. I, I feel like that just doesn't even have a chance of going through. But of course, you know, you don't want to rule out anything, uh, especially when it comes to the NBA. But, you know, um, as far as the Clippers and the Paul George trade for the possible Paul George trade for uh, Kevin Durant, a lot of people would tell you that's, um, you know, a pretty good trade if if, um, if if it actually went through. And I will say this, you know, if you have somebody like Kevin Durant, if you have an opportunity to get somebody like Kevin Durant, uh, more than likely, 99% of the time, most teams are going to take them. Because, like I said, this is Kevin Durant we're talking about. We're talking about one of the premier players and scorers of all time. And we're, we're, we're talking about a cerebral assassin on offense that most people, that most players in the NBA can't deal with. And, you know, he's still, you know, a great player, even though he's 34 years old. He is getting up there in age a little bit. But at the same time, you know, he's still, you know, one of the greatest players ever played this game. One of the best scorers we ever seen. One of the best lethal scorers we ever seen. So you add somebody like him with Kawhi Leonard. I mean, wow, that would be, you know, more than epic right there. And then on on the back end, you got John Wall lingering around. And the rest of the Clippers team is very, very equipped to, you know, do a lot of great things, especially with, you know, the pieces that they have surrounding them and actually, you know, re-signing Nicholas Batum and even somebody like, you know, smaller on the roster like Amir Coffey was big for the Clippers underratedly this offseason because those are the two, uh, those two type players can, well, we know Nicholas Batum, his resume speaks for itself. He's been around for a long time in the NBA and he plays really well with the Clippers. He fits well and he's very versatile and he's one of their main players when it comes to big, you know, big games because he can defensively guard anybody one through five and he can knock down big shots all the time so it's like you know he's one of those players that's you know kind of irreplaceable to me you know so he's one of those players that they they definitely look at as one of their unsung heroes and he always should be looked at that way but um as far as you know Kevin Durant for Paul George you know I definitely I'm, I'm gonna say this I think the chemistry that the the Clippers have right now you know as a team and everything that they've been through they're really they're really solid the way they are I mean I don't know if they really need to add any more pieces you know to their their roster if you ask me I think they're really good the way they are you know what I'm saying the way they have everything you know you got Kawhi PG John Wall and the rest of the crew there um it looks like it's definitely a, a team that's going to be you know definitely Definitely tough, a tough out. A team is going to be tough to beat in the playoffs, and they definitely look like a championship caliber team, no doubt about it. But I will say, you know, um, like I said, if you got a chance to get somebody like Kevin Durant, you got to take that because, in 99% of the time, an organization is going to take that because it's like that's a once in a lifetime generational type player. You see, what I'm saying he's not like just a regular star player in the NBA, you know, who has a who has a decent resume and who's been around for a little while. I mean, Kevin Durant could be, you know, at one 
point, you know, a lot of people looked at Kevin Durant. I mean, he could be on the Mount Rushmore, you know what I'm saying, of basketball players. That's how that's how elite he is, you know what I'm saying? He still has that elite level talent, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, if you got a chance to get somebody like him, I don't know how you look elsewhere. I really don't. I mean, and I don't think, my, my point is, I don't think no organization is going to look elsewhere. It doesn't matter what I say. I think the Clippers should kind of stay the way they are, you know, with what they have. But I mean, damn, I mean, I hate to get rid of Paul George or anything like that because I like his chemistry with the team. I like his chemistry with Kawhi and, you know, everything like that. But it, like I said, you know, Kevin Durant, that's that's Kevin Durant, though. So, I mean, you know, if the Clippers have a chance to deal Paul George for him, you know, they're going to do it with no hesitation. So, I mean, I don't think that, you know, I think the Clippers would be just as good either way. Like if they added Kevin Durant, took away Paul George, you know, of course, they're going to be even their, their chances of winning the championship is even better, of course, especially with Kawhi Leonard. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I mean, you got to look at it from this standpoint. How much would they have to give up else, you know, to get Kevin Durant? Because the per the reports are saying that the Nets want more in return than what the Clippers are offering with the Paul George package and what the Lakers are offering with the Anthony Davis package. So, I mean, if that's the case, that means the Clippers might have to give up somebody like Paul George, maybe uh, Luke Kennard and maybe, uh, you know, uh, or Paul George and a Reggie Jackson. And all the, and, and their future picks just to get, you know, a Kevin Durant. And like I said, you know, I, I've been saying it, so I'm going to stay. I'm going to stand on what I said. When you give up too many pieces to get one piece, sometimes that comes back to hurt you or haunt you. Because what if hypothetically they do something like that? Let's just hypothetically say they give up somebody like Paul George and they give up, um, you know, somebody like Norman Powell or, or Reggie Jackson, like I said, and a couple of future picks. Now you're missing two of your key players, even though you do have Kevin Durant. But what if hypothetically Kevin Durant gets injured, you know, during the season? What, what, hypothetically, what if that happens? Now, you know, the two for the price of one, so to say, um, you, you really lost out on that deal because you lost two good, solid players. And one in Reggie Jackson that predominantly stays healthy all the time, at least with the Clippers, he, he has for the most part. And, you know, Paul George is coming back with something to prove as well off of last season since he didn't finish it. And, you know, now you, you messed up the chemistry with the team. And on top of that, the new guy that you acquired in Kevin Durant is out for the season or out for a substantial amount of time. And he hasn't built that chemistry with the team. See, the one thing about, you know, with PG and like, let's say somebody like Reggie Jackson, if they were going to trade somebody like that, they already built chemistry with the team the chemistry the culture is already there it's already a part of what they're doing you see what i'm saying so if paul george gets injured he can just step right back in where he was so can reggie jackson because they're a part of they're a big part of the culture and they're big and they, and they have chemistry very well with the team already the chemistry is already high so if the chemistry is already high then i mean it's like that's just players stepping right back into their natural position and playing at the same level that they were but if you acquire somebody like kd or somebody like that who has been known to be injury prone these last four or five years if you look at kd's injury history it's very very concerning if you ask me but i'm just saying hypothetically you get somebody like kd and he goes down let's say midway of the season Season, and let's say he comes back late latter part of the season see that's no good because the chemistry is not there remember when you acquire new players they have to play out pretty much every game that they can to build that chemistry so they can get on the same page with other players in the locker room because they're not at that stage yet and this is what i'm saying you can't have no hiccups when you acquire somebody you got to make sure that they I mean, you got to hope that they stay healthy as much as possible if they haven't been on the team because their their camaraderie with the other players and how they get along and how they play on the court and how they figure each other out on the court is everything when you're trying to win a championship that's the reason why a lot of teams with big threes and all those type you know super teams don't win the first year sometime uh, when they're putting the team together because it, it it's all about chemistry it's not about the talent the talent is there of course but 
the reason why they didn't win because they don't have that cohesiveness one amongst each other on the court to where everybody knows where everybody's supposed to be at every point in time and they make the right passes make the right reads and they make the right plays and execute them at a high level that's chemistry and that's something that if they acquired somebody like Kevin Durant he would have to gain with the team and hopefully he would stay healthy during the season enough to do that but like I said sometime when you get rid of two three players for one and that one player you know flames out or gets injured now you're stuck because you don't have that depth that you used to have with those other players you gave away for this one dynamic player and like I said I understand organizations are always going to take that opportunity I mean nine times out of ten Matter of fact, 10 times out of 10, an organization is going to take somebody like Kevin Durant. I mean, it doesn't matter who's on the team. They're going to take somebody like Kevin Durant over him. And that's just the way it is. So, you know, with that being said, you know, uh, I don't really foresee this trade going through with you know paul george and maybe a other you know a couple other acquisitions along with that i don't really personally see it going through i personally see it stalling you know um and like i said don't get me wrong i wouldn't be surprised if it does go through um because in the nba you, anything can happen we all know that by now so there's no need to look elsewhere or even think anything else about that i mean it, the, the, the trading is crazy in the offseason. We know that. But I personally think it's not something that's going to come to life myself. But um, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it did. But I I would be surprised if the Clippers gave up a lot, you know, to get Kevin Durant and lose their depth like that because depth is what it's all about. I've, we've seen teams very top heavy having a great starting lineup and their bench is not really as good as it was or as good as it used to be or as good as it can be. You see, and like I said, when you have a deep bench, Bench, that's those user teams that win championships so that's what i'm saying like we'll see how it all pans out but um i personally don't see it happening you know uh with the paul george you know exchange for you know kevin durant um because like i said i don't think brooklyn is really into that because i think they want a lot more because of who kevin durant is and paul george really just isn't enough now hypothetically if the clippers said you know hey you know uh we'll give you Kawhi leonard you know for um kd then of course course you know Brooklyn would jump on that because that's that's Kawhi Leonard that's that's on a whole nother level so I mean um but still that's you know that, that's not the case so um I'm just anticipating to see exactly how the rest of the offseason plays out because there's so many different trades and you know Rudy Gobert going to the Wolves and you know now you know shout out to Hardenstein you know for him taking the money you know he had to do what he had to do he went to the you know Knicks you know so now I think the Clippers should focus on a big man you know as well another centerpiece actually so um definitely need to work on that definitely got some uh, openings there especially definitely use some more depth in that area but um the kd thing is very interesting don't get me wrong but um i don't know if the clippers are going to go through with that because like i said giving up too much of their depth is really going to be their achilles heel because that's what makes them such a unique scary team because of all the depth that they have so i mean you know the clippers got to be careful and they got to be wise in their decision making so we'll see what happens uh, the rest of this offseason but um don't be surprised by anything but also you know what i'm saying take a lot of things that's being reported out there you know with a grain of salt until you see it for yourself so but uh other than that we'll see how it pans out we'll see how the kd thing pay plays out and we'll see what the clippers continue doing off season in regards to any acquisitions that they decide to move forward with but hey that's my take on everything leave any comments in the comment section check out my other videos if you haven't and hey cali out